Welcome, John Hill, to the Mother God Intergalactic Podcast. Thank you for allowing me to move here to your home. I, I brought my kids with me, actually left the other kids at home. I abandoned them all just to come and serve you, to make you chicken parm and, Thank you. and to bring you Thank drinks you. in bed and to roll joints Thank for you and Thank you. to celebrate your um, omnipotence. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I was coming, I was like five minutes before this about to start. I was like, oh my God, I got to put on a costume. This is, Sadly, this is all my own uh, jewelry, not normally worn as a headpiece, but this is in fact it. my magic robe that I talk about all the time. <laughs> so... Mother God was on to something. Mm-hmm. Comfort. Comfort. She wanted to be comfortable. She wanted people to bring her chicken parm because that's what the Galactics told her. Robin said chicken parm and don't bring me any fucking chicken Alfredo. Yeah. And make it right. Make it the way I want. And uh, don't. And may, maybe a quesadilla on the side. <laughs> it's, a side of quesadilla is always yeah. good. I forgot about that. What do you think? Robin Williams, may his soul rest in peace, one of our greatest actors and comedians of our time. Mm. What do you think his family makes of these people using his name over and over like Robin said, Robin said? That is such a great question. I hadn't even thought about that. I I have to, I hope that they are uh, spared from it, to be honest. I hope they are in peace. I hope that they are in a bubble of you know, um, grieving and peace and harmony. And I hope they're not <laughs> reliving. I mean, this is, it's trauma upon trauma, this whole show, yeah. the whole situation. Even her mood yeah. board of Robin and the other galactics, including Michael Jackson mm-hmm. and uh, other celebrities. It, it Even just seeing that mood board was traumatic. What about um, Donald Trump being on the mood board and he's alive? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else was dead. Just he was uh, alive. That is true. Well, maybe he is a super galactic and he can be. Well, you know, maybe let's start a conspiracy that he isn't alive. Oh, he's and a shapeshifter. He's, <laughs> he's a reptilian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe he's both. Mm. He's hybrid. Well, we're. I, I'm going to base this uh, episode that we're doing on this Vanity Fair article that was by Amy Borden that came out earlier this year. And then, of course, this documentary that we're talking about directed by Hannah Olson, Love Has Won the Cult of Mother God. Now, did you know about this before the documentary came out? Were you familiar with this particular cult? Yes. And I specifically remember when I was working at Watch What Happens Live, you know, every night, you know, you write the script. I was a writer at Watch What Happens Live for four years, and you you write the script that day. You alternate with someone, and it, when it's your day, you kind of still go in. And around nine p.m. at or in those days, around nine p.m. when the show, uh, you know, you're kind of waiting for it to start. And the last minute, it's like, hey, you know, what else could we swap in for a more current Mazel or Jack Hole? And so you're always uh- scouring the internet. And so I was, we would just sit there and scour and scour and scour. And so. Any sort of weird cult or anything like that would come across my desk. And I remember watching the live streams, not religiously, no pun intended, but I would watch and I would say, wow, here is a person. What? So I was aware of it. I watched uh, some of the live streams and I noticed how belligerent she was. And I noticed, uh, and, and then I kind of forgot about it when she passed spoiler Mm -hmm. alert, Um, the colloidal silver (laughs) also came to mind because I had taken colloidal silver on Broadway as a singer. Colloidal silver is like something, you know, if you don't want to always be taking antibiotics, you're crammed in a theater together, you're singing and you get, you know, it's like the Petri dish. You're always getting sinus infections and you have to sing eight shows a week. So colloidal silver is one of those things where it's like, we'll take this, but it was always told like sparingly. Um, you could buy this. You could buy it at your local. You can buy it pharmacy? now. Yeah, you can really? buy it. You can buy it anywhere at a health food store. Do you okay. know about colloidal silver? Do you know why we take it? I just know about the man that was blue on Oprah. Right. Um, that guy, and it, it's just from what I've heard from just people talking about this. You take it because it's a, a catch-all cure for. I don't know what. Okay, COVID? let me. They said COVID. They cured COVID with it. Of course. Let me tell you the scientific or parascientific theory behind colloidal silver. Okay. Um, it is a holistic remedy. It is not not without 
merit. Like it could be useful in time. And basically, silver is an antibacterial agent, the metal silver, which back in the day before refrigerators and things like that, people would put a silver dollar in milk so it wouldn't spoil. It keeps bacteria. Oh. So silver is a natural deterrent from bacteria, things like that. So but okay. the problem is you can't it is impossible to regulate. I'm not a scientist, but forgive me, but this is what my understanding. It's impossible to like dose as we see you you like a little bit might help but if things get bad you go to a doctor it's kind of like add it to your magnesium and your vitamins you know it's not it's yeah, yeah, not yeah, yeah. in repl to replace penicillin or something but yeah, you know right. he health nuts have always liked it because in theory it could maybe prevent if you're going to get three colds a year maybe you just get two like it's a little extra okay. zhuzh in your toolbox. It is not to be, but the, and the reason the FDA said limits it is because you of course can turn blue as we've seen. Yeah. It's a problem. Yeah. It's a problem. Um, okay. So, oh my God. So on April 28th of 2021, the mummified corpse of Amy Carlson was discovered in the mission house near Crestone. It's state of decay suggested she'd been dead for several weeks. I believe she was last seen alive by somebody on the 21st, they said, or so they thought that she was alive when they saw her on the 21st. And then on the 28th is when she was found. But I think probably when the person saw her on the 21st, she was dead. And they just, they were just wheeling her around. Right. You know, weekend at Bernie style. So she was 45 when she died. Her body was found wrapped in a sleeping bag with uh, Christmas lights, face covered in glitter. The eyes were missing. Uh, a makeshift shrine. Seven members of the group were charged with abuse of a corpse as well as... Um, all sorts of abuse of the corpse things and then also like taking a body across state and then child abuse because there were two children there, a 13 year old that was the daughter of Aaron, who we meet later. And then the two year old, which was Miguel's child. We don't know who the mother of Miguel's child is, nor do we know where Miguel is today with all that money. Mm. Yeah. Literally, he, and I he couldn't didn't, find anything about it. He didn't participate in the documentary either. They said he didn't respond. Uh, no, because I don't think they can find him. Yeah. Honestly, I looked and looked and looked, and there's no word on what's happening with Miguel if these days. I were Miguel, I would be at Sandals. I would be <laughs> on the beat. I would be <laughs> dis I would be es escaping the country and counting the money and trying to never yes. hear any of this yes. again. Yes, I agree. I'm trying to move my screen over so I can just make sure that my um, thing is staying right here in my third Your eye. Your jewels so are correct. They are okay. serving. I want to be uh, focused with my third mm -hmm. eye here. So did you think that her stuff – she literally just got necklaces and tied them around her head. It would be the biggest – Countess Luann statement thing you've ever seen. Yes. Like hang up I was like, why isn't she cross-eyed at this point? Like, ugh. You know? It's like, well, wild. and I say this with sensitivity, Mary Payne. She was drunk. A lot. The, yeah, that is a, that is a, a lot. Yeah. That is a that was someone who drank themselves to death. Yeah, that's for really sure. what the story is about, and it is so tragic to see that was alcoholism and drug abuse beyond, and then just a bunch of enablers. You know, I think they were yes. all trying to really find meaning, but but really, that's that was the saddest part. She was just completely fucked up the entire yeah. time. Yes. Yes. So um, I will tell you what's going on now. So after uh, she ascended and she was gone, um, the website Love Is One was taken offline, but they renamed everything. And now it's called 5D Full Disclosure and um, their 5D Full Disclosure. And Father God now, of course, has a separate group called Joy Reigns, which um, FM, Father God Multiverse, went over there with him. Um, in the documentary, you know, she, she, they show us that in 2007, she was kind of on a, a journey and started looking at stuff on the internet, trying to figure out her path in life and decided she was going to go with this, um, intergalactic group and leave her family and her three children mm -hmm. to go be with this guy who was father God, um, Amerith was his name. But then she actually decided she was more God than he was. So she went on her own. She was like, Beyonce, leave me destiny's child. She was yeah. like, nope. I've got bigger things. What did you think about when you first saw this guy? When you first saw Am Amareth, Amareth, whatever the hell his name was. Um, these, oh gosh, what did I think? St too much shrooms. 
oh, I was like, it's, it's a full, <laughs> full meth situation yeah. with this guy. Yeah. Like, um, I, it was a perfect storm of this. Yeah, I think she wanted to find someone who would enable her to be high 24 seven and yeah. never have to have any sort of responsibilities in life, including caring for your children or having a job. And, you know, her mom even says when she discovered ecstasy, something changed. And I think that's when like, you know, I'm sober. I get it. When you, when, when you're in that phase, you're like, Oh, I only, I only want to do this for the rest of my life. I don't want any responsibilities. Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, it, I see it. It's like, she was like, no, no, no. Oh, I have three kids. No, thanks. I want to go live in a tent with this guy and say, I'm God. Why not? Yeah. So why I, not? He was a perfect, it was a perfect escape for someone who didn't want to live in reality. Yeah. So it's interesting. Um, in, so it's Hannah Olson that did the film, right? So Hannah Olson says that she's saying in this article, she says, reality doesn't make sense for a lot of people because the income inequality. And she's talking about a lot of the people that came to Mother God came because they maybe had addiction or the healthcare system had failed them and they were looking for like a way to heal themselves that wasn't within like the insurance system, yeah. which is sort of like a, a thing you didn't think was everybody's coming broken, right? Yeah. Um, and she says, this girl Olson, who's a millennial, says, my generation is not in to the world we were promised. And cult studies suggest that when your predicted triumphs fail, mm. people shift their realities to match their belief wow. instead of the other way around. So you shift your reality to match what your belief is. It's just sort of like, I can make anything work in my mind. And you see it with all these followers, everything that's happening, that's getting worse and worse and worse. They're like, well, that's just Robin calling from the intergal intergalactic. So, right. you know, mom said she wanted to go to a 3D hospital, but we said no. Well, you in know, a like, scary way, is I hate saying this, but like we kind of all do that, don't we? If uh, you want, yeah, to make it right in your mind of whatever you believe, yeah, yeah. I mean, and I think you try to hold yourself accountable to make sure you're believing the right things and not going absolutely crazy. And that's why you have good friends and family who keep good people yes. around to keep you in check. But like, I think the human survival method is like adapt. You know, just yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. gosh, it's so scary. Um, so. Another, uh, these are just some things I'm getting from this article that doomsday thinking increases during crisis, like societal shifts such as, you know, COVID, economic strife. And um, one person discusses the trauma they had following the mortgage crisis. And they said, you know, Amy's ideology empower people to believe that they could heal themselves. Now, we only see this kind of core group of 12 to 20 people on the show, mm -hmm. but in reality, they had like, 1.5 million people watching them. One of them was John Hill from the Watch What Happens Live studios. <laughs> right. Well, they were in Vulture. Yeah, I think people were posting about them. They were like, hey, there's this crazy – because they were just, they, just, they just seemed kooky. They were doing tarot card readings. They were selling juice. They were selling vitamins, yeah. selling colloidal silver. So it seemed just kind of funny. And they were young and cute. They seemed – and Amy yeah. was very beautiful back in the day. She was very yeah, telegenic. Totally. And she could – you know, she just bullshitted confidently that's what all these people do they just kind of vamp confidently it's just like word salad like you don't even know what some of these words mean but they're putting them all together and you're like well even, that sounds smart even teal swan i mean oh teal swan yeah it, it, what she says is ha most of the time i'm like well that makes sense do i believe in teal swan right <laughs> right and <laughs> she's so confident and some and she makes good points that's the other thing scary i mean teal will will make some good points it, it, you know, Amy was just kind of, you know, drunk and batshit. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, you know, all doomsday groups are – auto. Um, I'm going to say this wrong. I'm trying to say it right. Is this one of these words I can never go – it's like an auto autocracy, like a democrat – Autocracy. Democracy. Yeah. Autocracy. Thank yeah. you. I knew I was like I'm, – I'm putting the, <laughs> the, the, the syllable in the wrong uh. word. I'm putting the syllable in the wrong way. So um, it's, a, it's a kind of escape. And so when you see cults, it's because people join cults because your own reality fails out of control. But then when you join a cult, you're told your reality and you relinquish all control. And right. so it's like with this group, um, the, the filmmaker says you couldn't tell who was steering the ship here because the followers did end up kind of taking over. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden they could they could talk to Robin. How, how are, right. all of a sudden they were talking to Robin. Robin was telling the followers, now we need to go to California. Now do we, do they just want to go on a vacation to Hawaii? Like, 
Amy wasn't saying Robin told her this. They were saying it and they would go. It was wild. Yeah, it was it was crazy. I think sometimes she didn't know where she was. No. Toward no. the end there. And so I'll tell you something interesting, and I've said this before on the podcast. So my my husband is a sober person as well, and going on uh we're nine years now. And it's 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 interesting about the paralysis from alcoholism, the nerve damage she had, because they, they think that's why all of a sudden, like from the waist down, she couldn't walk. Yeah. I know from my experience with my husband and other people I know that have been through addiction, you do get like numb feet and things yeah. like that because you start to get, because like a therapist told me one time, you're literally poisoning your body from the inside out. So if you have a hangnail, it's never going to cure. Mm-hmm. If you have a zit on your face, it's never going to clean up because your body's being poisoned from the inside out. You don't have a way to to heal yourself. Normally, a zit would clear, a hangnail would clear. So with this, she's so sick, and so she's got all this nerve damage from the drinking. And what they're doing is pouring silver down her throat, seeing that it's obviously not working. Right. But they're it- continuing to do it. And she has the anorexia on top of that. Oh, I feel so sad for her. Watching was, it was really rough to watch someone deteriorate like that. And just, um, they just kept going. And, and silver is a heavy metal. It is toxic for you. A little bit can maybe keep some bacteria away, like I said, but like it is not something you should ever be drinking on a daily basis. And then, you know, they would say she uses alcohol, which I've heard that too. Some people, you know, these are all natural things for you know, humans to use, but, but drinking vodka all day, um, and not eating is, is just not healthy. So it doesn't matter if you're a spiritual teacher or, or even if you are God in a human body, it's probably not, um, it's still going to kill God in the human body. It's not helping you vibrate at your, you know, highest. When they were showing her and Jason, uh, father God, number three, the final father God, drinking stuff. My daughter was watching it with me. She's 20. And she goes, oh, well, at least they're drinking water. I go, no, no, I think that's straight vodka. It's yeah. clear. I think it's just straight vodka. Yes. It was alcohol. And um, sometimes there was like wine, just like white wine all day. I noticed a lot of just like daytime white wine. Yeah. <laughs> well, the follower said from morning until evening, they were just drugs all day. And then yeah. there's kids running around. Yeah. And you're just like, what the fuck? So, and I do wonder what happened to Aaron's other kids because Aaron came in with three kids and then when they all found Amy in the shrine only her one of her kids was there what happened to her eyes Amy's eyes um I think that what <laughs> I, I didn't read know that till the, you said it <laughs> she had no eyes when they found oh my her God. and her face was playing with glitter and so initially the I looked at the police report and the initial police report said that she appeared to be painted and covered in glitter but when they realized later she wasn't painted she was just blue she blew yeah. She was just blue, but they she, they had covered her in glitter, but they said the reason her eyes were gone was just decomposition. I mean, I don't want to be unsympathetic or insensitive to this horrific experience that happened to these people, but I just have to say like, you know, Father God, you know, he went away, he took a few months away for meth, you know, and then he came back and there was so much dysfunction going on, but like the psychosis that happens, I have a friend who is who was one of the most amazing composers, extremely successful. He was on a TV show, really successful, very like popular. And he had a later in life weed triggered psychosis, which triggered latent congenital schizophrenia from too much oh weed God. smoking and is now on the streets. We can't find, I mean, like it can, I, I've, and that's just weed. He was never a drug person, you know? Um, yeah. So I think like if you're hallucinating and you're smoking that much weed and I'm a former stoner, I used to smoke weed all literal all day long, all night long. Um, I just, and I think it's so healthy for some people smoke all you want, literally mm-hmm. go for it. But yeah, in a collective all day long shrooms, weed, meth, ecstasy, <laughs> alcohol all day. I and just, drinking. Yeah. You know, and and also being in, in a group hysteria that is saying, oh, her body's falling apart. That must mean her spirit is so elevated. Her she's she's so spiritual, her her she can't uh, nobody can contain her. Like you were saying, that is confirmation of a crazy belief. 
uh, rearranging your beliefs to match your reality or whatever. Um, yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I, I can kind of see how they would say, okay, we need to bring her dead body back to Colorado and maybe... Because it was near... That was near Mount Shasta where they yeah. where a lot of aliens come in. Mm-hmm. I um, love that mayor or the town mayor of of the Colorado town who was like explaining why people flock to that city. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems like everybody, if you're just a bunch of, you know, hippies hanging around wanting to be Go great, for it. Yeah. live your life. It's a beautiful view. And if you're not hurting anybody, he's like, everybody here is pretty peaceful and chill. And then every so often you will get a, a, a cult will come in because they want to be closer to the mountain where they're going to be lifted up. And the spaceships that they kept showing us, I was like, now we are looking at clouds. Girl, those but, are clouds. But do were they seeing little spaceships or were they really thinking the clouds were the spaceships? Or were there something else there that we just weren't seeing because like the camera couldn't catch it because we're not elevated no. enough? Like, I don't know. I think we weren't not, we were not shrooming and we were not on weed and we're we just were looking not, at the clouds. I think there were clouds. And I think when you're in that, when you're seeing shit, you're seeing shit. And I don't think it was. And everybody like, sees it together. And hey, maybe yeah. they were. Maybe we're just not. But um, I don't, th- you know, as we see, a spaceship did not come down that we I saw know. at least. Maybe it did. Maybe the joke's on us. I mean, I don't know if she ever, when, when they found her, she was 75 pounds. And her max weight that she was allowed to get to was 103.1 because anything over 103.1, Robin said, was too much and the spaceship would not pick her up. Oh, my God. 103.1, which is really very, very tiny. I have to say, if a spaceship can figure out, if if there's the technology of an alien to figure out a way to get its spaceship here, they can probably handle 103.2 you know, or, or, or some fluctuation in weight. I, I don't know how Robin Williams became an expert on mm-hmm. the weight limit on a spaceship, but he did. And again, I really almost the whole time was thinking about his family mm. because when I, I, so you were saying you, you came to this, like actually watching um, Hope and Aurora on their lives, but I came to it uh, by the Dateline episode. The mm. Dateline episode was like a two hour Dateline I listened to my friends, Kimberly and Katie, who have the great podcast, A Date with Dateline, about mm-hmm. it. And that's and then I read an article or two here or there, but I really hadn't thought about it, you know, in a year or so since it was on. Yeah. And, and then everybody's like, oh, you got to watch this documentary. I was like, I think I already know about it from Dateline. But no, 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 no. Right. I read more articles. I mean, if you just sort of like, there's a Wikipedia about it, and then that links to all the articles. And then I was just like, this rabbit hole, this rabbit hole, this rabbit hole. And then I decided to put on a costume. So... <laughs> Um, the players, okay, the players here. So we've got first father, God, who is Amareth White Eagle, probably mm-hmm. not his government name. Um, he, he looks more like, like a Bruce Santa. or yeah. a Santa. <laughs> Santa. He did yeah. look like a Bruce. Mm-hmm. Then second father, God was Andrew. So he's the one that left. He came in and initially got all that tech set up. Yeah. And he was a person that had had an opioid addiction and was sort of looking for something to help him when the healthcare system really had failed him. Nice guy. Totally normal. By the way, he never got a name. She never gave him a name. He was always just Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. And the uh, uh, interview I listened to, which I believe was the Vanity Fair writer on Kate Casey's uh, podcast, uh, that the writer said that Andrew and Amy at one point early on, because he was the first one in, yeah. they did leave for a few months together and sort of ran it from far away. And he was the one that was telling her, like, you're really not God. I need you to be able to admit you're not God. Oh, And he got her to admit it and stuff, but then she would get sucked back in because like Miguel and these, Miguel was the first follower, the one that ran off with the money. He was like, I don't know why you're letting this guy tell you you're not God. And maybe Miguel was jealous because he was never Father God. Oh, he was my. like the CFO, you know? <sighs> So then we have the third father god, John. Now, by the way, did you notice all these people always had a really sunburned nose? Everybody's nose is always just baked to a crisp. Well, I would also point to the alcoholism because sometimes I yeah. get I, I can see, you know, when people are are really deep into it, you know, that's their true. extremities get a little crusty. Yeah. Okay, that's true too. All these people seem to have like a re- red nose. So then we get the fourth and final father God, which was Jason, who's the scariest person alive. And 
when he came in, John was confused because he had been given the name Father God, but she said, that's okay because now you're Father Multiverse. Yeah. Hence, for to known as FM. Uh-huh. And then Jason is uh, Father God. Now, FM Jason- seems like a very nice guy, too. Totally seems nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's still in it. Mm-hmm. With I can't believe that Miguel. Are, just, I mean, with are, uh, Jason. Yeah. Are they not? Why are they not in jail again? Remind me. Okay, so the people that were arrested. So all right. So not to sidetrack. Okay, no, no, no. Yeah, look, I just want to go through all the players, okay. and then I'll talk about okay. who was arrested. Okay, so we've got John, which was FM, and then we've got Jason, uh, Father God. Then we have Miguel, who was the manager of logistics and things, the money. And Miguel was smart enough to put everything in his name. So when she did die, everything was in his name. So actually, it's just – it is his money, technically. That's what I was going to say. It's like kind of like con artists out conning each other. I don't – it's not like she worked – well, I don't want to be rude. But it's not like she built a a valid business and then it was stolen from her. I mean, they all collectively like took a dump. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then we have Hope. So she's the one that you would see on the lives. Hope and Aurora. Hope had the brown hair. Her mom, Linda, was featured. Hope's real name is Ashley. And then Aurora, I don't know her real name. She was the blonde-haired girl that had one of the best lines. When they had to take uh, Mother and put her in a tent to go camping, her main concern was, she was like, look, I'm from South Florida, and I don't camp. And so that was was almost what broke her, the camping. Yeah. Not the cult, the camping. She was like, I <laughs> didn't want to. We camped for like two weeks. She was like, I mean, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. I couldn't believe they camped for two weeks and they had no like toilet. Just pooping in the woods. That's because they were waiting for the pickup. Yep. But and then Mother God didn't die. Ass body. Or no, I guess Well, that was they went camping first and then she didn't die. Yeah. And then they camped again after she did die when they were coming from like California to Colorado or whatever. So- Hope and Aurora were the two that were out there, you know, selling it to the people. And then we have Faith, the blonde lady who may have been Australian. I can't remember, but she was the healer. Yeah, seemed a little British. Yeah, British Mm -hmm. something. She was a healer. And then we had El Moira, and that's Ryan. El Moira also had a real crusty nose. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then we had Mother Mary, who was the old lady. I know. It's like, where's Mary's family? Then we had Aaron, who's the one that joined the cult with the kids. That we had Commander sad. Buddha. Commander Buddha was the one person of color, really, besides Miguel, I guess. And Commander um, Buddha in the documentary seemed very uh, still much into it. Yeah, he and Mother Mary now are just roommates. Crazy. They love each other. Yeah. And then we have Sarah, who's that former member who came into it like very sickly, and then by the t- and then she ended up leaving. So the people that were arrested were Ryan Kramer, which is El Moira. Christopher Royer, who I don't know who that is. I don't know who is Christopher. Uh, Sarah Rudolph. Okay, so Sarah was the former member. So Mm -hmm. she got arrested and then she uh, left. Karen, the one with the three kids. Jason, uh, Father God number three. John, Father God number two. And Obdulia Franco, who I don't know who that is, but it was her car that they were arrested in. So those are the people that were arrested for tampering with the corpse, Abuse of a corpse, child abuse, transferring a corpse across state lines, all these things. When they dropped all the charges against them, I believe it was just because they couldn't really point to who transferred the body, Mm -hmm. who wrapped the body in the Christmas. Like they couldn't point to who did what. So they're just like, forget it. Damn. (sighs) That's, That's why all the charges were dropped. So the charges were officially dropped and they're just, um, okay. I mean, I guess there's a coroner's report who said she died of anorexia, alcoholism, Uh liver failure, whatever, silver. Um, Mm -hmm. And so I guess that's, if there was a murder or foul play or injury, then it would seem like we need to investigate. But they're like, well, she died of technically natural causes, which is so messed up. Because I would say it's neglect as well. I would, I would, you would think that a um, authority, the authorities would say, who let her starve? Who didn't take right. her to a hospital? Who was, but I guess they didn't have a power of attorney. It's just kind of, it doesn't seem like it's that complicated. It's like, you're all caring for someone. And, and I would even say preventing her from going to get medical attention, but they, they kept saying, don't go to a hospital, don't go to a hospital. But it's like, if I ever just on the record with you, Mary Payne, okay. if I ever am okay. in a cult and I say, don't take me to a hospital, 
take me anyway. Okay. Okay. I will. I'm saying I will. That and say, publicly? Yes. Yeah. I, I've said publicly as well. If I'm in a coma, do not let my husband pull the plug because I think something will come along to 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 revive me. So I would like to Terry Shivo. I'd like to be alive for 20 really? years. Yeah. Don't pull the plug on me. I want my kids to come and visit me and like fix my hair. I I I don't want anybody because what if the next week there's like a cure and then you pull the plug on me. I think it depends. Yeah. Okay. No, I love that take. I, I think for me, it would depend on what I'm in the coma from and what my current physical state is. Like if I look good, maybe keep me alive a little bit longer. Right. But if, if I've been right. in some horrible crash and I am disfigured, knock on wood, you can go ahead and yank it. <laughs> So for you, it's more about keep it, keeping your looks intact. <laughs> well, who, I mean, I don't have kids who are going to come do my makeup and hair. I have my dog. <laughs> keep me along as, alive as long as my dog's alive. And then when he goes, just bury us together. Oh, no. Is, is, is Pete around somewhere? He is, squat, he is squatting and rubbing his butt on the carpet as I'm speaking. Don't, don't you love that? We just got our whole um, – I say basement and the people think of like a basement, but it's like the lower level, right? Mm -hmm. Of our house recarpeted. It looks so great. It's this fabulous like herringbone carpet. Aww. And the first thing the dog did is like, oh yeah, this is a great place to rub my ass. <laughs> like, I wonder what it feels like. I, I've never experienced that. <laughs> just right up in the butthole, just, it just must, a hard carpet right up in the butt. Must, it must be very satisfying and it must really feel itch. like a good, a real good itch. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's, let's, okay. All right. So I want to talk about what their beliefs are. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the group believed that Carlson was a divine 19 billion year old being who had birthed all of creation. She said she had been reincarnated 534 times, including Jesus, Joan of Arc, Marilyn Monroe, Cleopatra, and she would be the one to lead the 144,000 into the fifth dimension. Um, yeah. So oh. 144,000 always plays a part in the cults. Always. What is that number? It's, so somewhere, people correct me if I'm wrong. I believe somewhere in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. it says when the rapture comes, it'll only be 144,000 that will be saved. Oh, well, then that would be in Revelation because Old Testament doesn't do the rapture. That is a new – that is a Christian nouveau moment. That is a born-again okay. situation. That is a revelation. Revelations. Okay. Yeah. Old Testament – yeah. New Testament is a little crazy. No offense. But yeah. I thought Revelations was in the Old Testament. No. No, Revelations is the last book of the Bible. Oh. <laughs> okay. Don't don't tell don't tell my parents I didn't listen in Bible school uh, or the camp I went to for five years. So, um, but the hundred and forty four thousand yes. is a thing, right? Mm -hmm. So when you think of people like um, uh, Kirk Cameron, yeah, yeah, he's he's very into the hundred and forty four thousand. Gotcha. And when you now think, I'm I'm back with you. Okay, got it. Okay, now you're with me. Mm -hmm. So when you think of um, it's left what's behind. Not, Left behind. It's what's her what's her nuts is the lady, uh, blonde haired. Um, it's going to come to me in a second. That killed her kids in Idaho, uh, in Rexburg, Idaho. Um, Lori Vallow. Damn. Oh yeah, and yeah, Chad yeah. Chad Daybell. Mm -hmm. They were very into the hundred forty four thousand, and so you know she and her kids and Chad Daybell and everybody they were all in the hundred forty four thousand until she realized, of course, her kids had turned into zombies and she had to kill them. Yes, because they weren't going to be in the hundred forty four thousand. Mm -hmm. But you have to go to Rexburg, Idaho, to be in the hundred forty four thousand, and that or or Maui. So <laughs> if you could just go to one of those two places, you're going to be good. You're going to be good. Yeah. So the hundred forty four thousand. So so. So Carlson was – she was into that. Okay. Mother God was into that as well. So um, they believed that the world was run by a cabal determined to keep the planet at a low vibrational state. That's another reason they wouldn't take her to the hospital was because mm. if she went to the hospital, somebody that worked at the hospital could like jump into her body yep. and take the world out of this – high vibrational state that she was taking on. So if she went to the hospital, somebody there was going to jump into her body and ruin it all. Oh, we, we wouldn't want that. Yeah. No. And who, who, what ER worker would be the one? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Just be some lady working her shift and be like, well, shit, now I got to yeah. take over the world. Now I'm mother God. Right. Right. And it reinforces the, like, we are on the outskirts. There is a, 
you know, it's very matrix. It's like we're on the outside. The world is not real. And if you go to the hospital, it's part of the system. And it's part of the man. And we don't want a part yes. of that. And yeah. Yeah. And that's also part they were they were very into QAnon conspiracy theories. Um, they routinely expressed speculation that uh, COVID nineteen was planned was a sure. you know that was a conspiracy. They thought uh, the Sandy Hook massacre, nine eleven, Holocaust, everything is a hoax. Uh-huh. Um, they also said that what society has been taught about the Holocaust was uh, suspicious. And Adolf Hitler, he was just trying to serve the light. Um, and they had a real problem with um, Jewish people and thought concentration clamps were just to teach Jewish people how to work. Oh. They had a uh, lot of This is coming from real... a, a group of people who do not have jobs, by the way. <laughs> everyone, yeah, well, that, everyone that cult. And then another thing I heard on this interview that I think was the Kate Casey interview was that they were so into this idea of the colloidal silver. And then if they couldn't get the actual silver to melt down themselves to put in the bottles that they hand wrote and then sell, they would um, take apart like their lighters. Oh, God, that's meth. And then just pull the parts of the lighters apart and melt that and then put that in water and sell that as the colloidal silver. That is meth behavior. Meth addicts will rewire the lighting in their apartment. They will take apart a circuit board and they will – that is <laughs> that is meth behavior. There was a meth encampment outside my building for a while and they were just taking shit apart. They were taking shit apart and rebuilding them in other forms, just projects, just – Crazy mechanical wiring projects with no results. It was awful. That is wild. Did you ever come home and be like, well, the power in my building is off because they've now gotten to the uh No, they would the steal box. bike they would steal bikes and electronics from around the city, bring them home, bring them like to this curb. They're gone now. And then they would just take them all apart. Well, they always say you should sh- it even if you shred your bills and stuff, people who are on yeah. meth will go and tape them all back together because they need a project to do. And that's why even oh. shredding your bills is not good enough. I don't know what you're supposed not, to do with it. Not I just for a throw away determined my mail. meth addict. Yeah. I, yeah, I throw my meth mail away w- unopened. Whole, because why yeah. not? They're going to put it together anyway. You don't want to give them more work. Yeah. I mean, I only know about meth behavior from Breaking Bad, but it was a lot of digging up holes in the middle of the night because you've got to, um, you know, you just have to dig those 12 holes or whatever. You have to. Yeah, you have to. You're, you're. I mean, taking a, a lighter apart to melt the silver down into colloidal silver to sell on the internet, that is the best description of a meth situation I've ever heard. Now, let's talk about uh, Father God, uh, the final Father God, Jason, and and maybe the, the Joy Reigns, um, J-O-Y-R-A-I-N-S, so Reigns, okay. Joy Reigns, um, Father God. Okay, so I told you before we got started, he reminds me of somebody that I knew in my life that mm-hmm. may or may not be leading a cult in Bali currently. Look, looks similar. Um, the guy that I know doesn't have bad teeth like that because I would never. The bad teeth <laughs> would be like, no. That's where I draw the line with the bad teeth. <laughs> um, when he came on the screen and was literally like, I'm here, I'm the devil, I killed her, I'm that guy. You were like, I think that was like the end of episode two. We were like, oh, oh. Something wicked this way comes. It was, I think it's like the last shot of episode one, even. Okay. Maybe, maybe two. So but scary. It was, it was, yeah, he was really scary. He's very much evocative of, um, I don't know, he's everything bad, you know, um, and also no shirt in the motel um, and the ponytail. Um, yeah. 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 I feel like I've met that guy a million times, you know, growing up in Texas. Yeah. Dangerous. It's just sort of like, where did he come from? He was running, uh, he was like the night manager at a blockbuster in Vegas. That would even seem when, like too good of a job for him. I'm and surprised. then he, ha- he was some sort of felon because he had an ankle bracelet, an ankle monitor. Um, well, what he a was romance. on tether, as we a, say on Love After Lockup. A, a McDonald's manager and a blockbuster manager form a cult. I mean, you couldn't really <laughs> write that any better. I think that should be your next screenplay. It's amazing. I mean, and then she what dies. What musical he, that would be. Oh, wow. There is plenty of things that would be a great musical in this story. The production yeah. number of making the silver. Yeah. You know, yeah. And then the production I, number of da- of traveling her dead body. You're you know, right. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that going across the stage and they have like a makeshift. Um, they're holding her up with like four 
you know, uh, mm. sort of like a like pallbearers. They're holding her up in the air with these these types of robes and things hanging down, and of course the Christmas l- lights. Yes, and like kind of like the Lion King. Like maybe it's a puppet of sorts. Yes. Like it takes certain people to kind of make her float through the ether. That's sort of what I'm thinking, and then the whole the the blueness of it all will have to be an act too. Oh God, yeah, yeah. The yeah. color scheme would really. Um, d- uh, shine forth in the second act once she's blue. Yeah, the whole show gets more blue and blue by the end. The whole and the whole audience is covered in like blue paint splashed from the I, ceiling. I think that um, immersive father father multiverse is our protagonist, and then father Definitely. god number three is our antagonist. Yes, for sure. You know, everything I will gets say, real dark when he comes in. There is there is a faction of people that think that Father God is hot. Um, I could see it. Well, as I said, I, I have someone in my life, former, that looked a lot like that, except for good teeth. Except for the teeth, he is hot. And I was he a- has like tanned, uh, tight skin. You know, he yeah. looks like you know he was doing lots of push ups. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a rough, rough and tumble guy. He looks like he, you know, he's like a. Definitely can get through jail in semi one piece, missing a few teeth, but yeah, yeah, yeah. How old do you think he is? I wonder. Let's see if I've got that on here. Let's guess before I look. I okay, bet you have it. I'm not going to look. I bet he's 47. Okay, he was born in 1975. Oh my god, I'm right. So he's is that how old he is? 48. Yeah, I'm 77 and I'm 46. I bet he's two. Yeah, two years older than me. Because he yeah, looks. I would, I- Good. He has the kinds of like genes that make you look, because he doesn't have a lot of hair either. He's kind of like, I don't know. You mean yeah. on his body, he didn't have a lot of hair. Yeah, he's not on like his a head. He had a lot of hair. Yeah, but he's not like a crazy bearded. You know, people with like not a lot of hair can kind of look youthful for a long time. Okay, you mean like a hairless body? Yeah, yeah. Or they can look real old and wrinkly. I mean. It could go both ways. He's been out in the sun a lot. So he is. All of them have. That's hence the, the red sun nose. noses. <laughs> but I'm telling you about the red noses. If, if you ever go back and watch it, I want you to notice that their sunburn all starts like here. So it is like they're wearing sunglasses and then they just yeah. got burned. Like they just. And they were sitting outside all, the, all day long drunk, like outside doing random chores. Yeah. They were okay. Burnt. And here's another question for you. That house that we saw, um, which was called the Mission, that was their home in Crestone. There's a. Let's just say there was 10 people that lived there, including children, where the house seemed to be a hovel of one bedroom. And she seemed to have it, have the bedroom. So were they all just on air mattresses? Oh, I don't even think air mattresses. I think like a towel, if they're lucky. There was a few couches. They would just curl yeah. up by the fire. They would just make little sleeping bag moments. Hell, my idea of hell. Help. Did you ever see one of the videos when you were watching it from Watch What Happens Live for content? Did you ever see one of the ones where um, Hope or Aurora came on and like, can you hear her in the background? She's so upset because she's taking on all of humanity and she's yelling, can you guys hear her? And everybody's in the background like terrified. I saw one where I remember seeing one where she was she was on camera kind of leading the broadcast and she was literally verbally abusing someone. And just snapping at them and wouldn't stop. And we were like, oh, she's a, she's just a drunk ass bitch. And she's mean. Yeah. She's a mean ass drunk too. She's not yeah. fun. Yeah. And it was Andrew who said, the second father God, who said, you know, what I quickly realized is she's drinking herself into a stupor every night. And like nobody here is doing anything about it. The other like thing he is seemed to be the one, you yeah, know, like when people to help. When someone's that drunk and they are, and no one is coming for you yet, you're fighting with them. That is when I'm out. Like everyone gets can get drunk and and go crazy, and that's fine. But like if if you're drunk and no one is fighting with you, but you're still picking fights, that's when it gets really dark to me. And she was doing that. Well, no one was arguing with her, and she was just berating them. It reminds me a little bit of um, Denise Richards on this past week's. Uh, <laughs> Beverly Hills, just what was happening there, John? Well, I do think here, this is an interesting question about Beverly Hills. Like there's a couple of different accusations that are flying around. Uh, You know, Kyle's like to Sutton, she's like, maybe you drink too much. And, and Sutton's like, well, you drink a lot too. You're spreading your legs, getting whipped cream in your 
ass by strippers. Uh And I just, I I want someone on the show to say, and I wish Kyle would say it. I think there is a difference and there's a, when you're concerned about your friends drinking, there's a difference between going out and drinking and partying and going crazy and vomiting and, you know, oh girl, I got drunk last night and partying. That's one version of being messy. I think the concern is when you're losing your train of thought in conversation, you forget what you're saying, you for, and you then you start to attack and be manipulative, but then you forget what you're talking about out of nowhere. Your personality is changing. And I think that's what Kyle is trying to say to Sutton. She's like, you're not making any sense and your personality is so weird right now and you're hot and cold. And that's another version of being altered in some way that is concerning. So it's not like an equal, like, yes, they're both messy, but like it's, I, I, I wish someone would articulate that. Well, I mean, that's what we saw exactly what happened with Denise, where she was selling Erica, like, you know what you did. And Erica's like, I really she was don't. On another planet. Yeah. And then she couldn't say what it was. She's like, she knows what she did. And Erica's like, if you would just tell me. And then it, finally, Erica did what I've did many times in my life. Like, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for that thing that I did that we both don't know what it is. Right. Well, you can't, you can't get mad if obviously the person has no idea what they're talking about. They're just in a different, they're in a blackout. She was in a blackout. I think. And then when she said that to Dorit was like, I know what you're doing. And Dorit's like, I'm just trying to help you with your coat. I love that (laughs) so much because it was upside down. It was upside down. And she was just like, Dorit's like, no, I'm literally just trying to say like, you're on camera. Let me help you with your coat. And Denise, Denise was giving her that. Uh huh. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. And Dorit's like, I'm just trying to help you with your coat. It's literally, I think it's upside down. I loved it. I loved it so much. That was, and then Denise, Denise's bottom teeth were like real brown. And that concerned me as well. I have a real thing with teeth, as you can tell. Um, Well, don't look at my bottom teeth. I went to the orthodontist yesterday and he was like, it's too late for you. He literally was like, there's nothing we can do for you to fix your bite. Um, that is crazy because even I, I got uh, a couple of years ago, I got Invisalign because my bottom teeth, even though I had braces when I was young, had gotten like really crowded. And they're like, basically, that's what happens when you get old is the inside of your mouth gets more crowded. Yeah. And so the only way to fix it is to like do braces again or Invisalign or whatever. And I did because I was like, I don't care. I can't stand because I have to look at myself in a camera. I can't stand right. looking at those jangly bottom teeth i hate my bottom teeth. denise doesn't give a shit no she doesn't no and she looked so beautiful the next day when they went to lunch i know i need to watch that lunch scene again because it was like who are these two different people and how did she was she not hung over that she could even pull it together to go to that lunch if i was that drunk i would be like oh, we're gonna have to reschedule because i gotta stay in bed for two days i think a lot of these people it's not just being drunk i think it's an Ativan and a tequila, you know? And well, what does an Ativan do? Is that the same as like a Xanax? What's mm-hmm. an Ativan? Literally the same. Okay. A Clonopin, okay. a Xanax, an Ativan, a Valium, okay. all in the same class of drugs, benzodiazepines. I think it's just a pill and a cocktail. And that will send you to, I mean, have face like a Schlotzky's deli sandwich. Okay. And, the- <laughs> and do you think also that's what was happening – this week on Salt Lake City with Meredith, who <laughs> well, she said, said she what, was on Xanax. On two, she took double. Well, she said that she was taking a sleeping pill for the flight, which I have to imagine Salt Lake to Bermuda is, you know, maybe six hours or something. And she was going to sleep on the flight, but then Whitney was like, "I think she forgot," and she took a second one. Yeah, quote unquote. She put her air quotes up. Yeah, yeah, she, she forgot. forgot. Two. Well, it's always more fun two. to take two. Who doesn't want to take double? The, <laughs> like when you take two Xanax, you don't have any cares in the world. Who doesn't want? zero cares in the world. That's great. It's a great feeling. I might, if I was being filmed for a TV show, I might want to keep my wits about me. You would think, (laughs) wouldn't you? Yeah. I would. I wouldn't want that to be televised. (laughs) Yeah. That privately. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It was a, it was a real, uh, it was a real pilled up week on Bravo yeah. TV. I, I would also think, you know, everyone, there's a lot of conversation about what is her, what is Meredith's accent? What is this? It's like, that's, your speech is fucked up. That's when yeah. you're you can't talk straight because you're fucked up. Well, I mean, yeah, we we saw Denise as well. It's like you know what you did, you know. I yeah, know. and I don't celebrate it. I don't think it's good for anyone. But I was entertained watching it. 
I agree with that. Like, again, I live with somebody in recovery. I have yeah. a brother-in-law in recovery. I have many friends in recovery. So I don't necessarily think it's funny, but I do find it entertaining. And I don't have a real concern for Denise or Meredith. Like, no. perhaps we would have that concern for like a Shannon Bedore. Like so, so other people we have seen on our shows that we do yeah. have a concern for. And you know what else? The good thing is that they're talking about it. It's not like no one's pretending it's not happening. And I think that's the only thing that matters. If no one was saying, oh, she was, she had a, you know, they're calling it out. And then that's, yeah, the person will take it from there. Yeah. Uh, speaking of um, people that have addiction problems, have you seen um, Leah M- uh, Sweeney's OnlyFans? No, I don't subscribe to anyone's. Fun. Maybe actually, I've subscribed, but no, no, no women on OnlyFans. No women. Okay. Have you subscribed? Well, no, I have not. But um, is it so sexual? I, oh yeah, it's like I'm going to sit in this chair, but I'm going to give you a little oop up the butt. Yeah, just up a the something. butt. Yeah, just like a little something. I didn't realize. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. And, yeah, hmm. and it's sad because the pictures that she's put like on Instagram to like tease it or whatever, it's like her kid's like high school backpack is like sitting in the background, and it's just well, like listen, here- milf. Milf, as we know, is a is a category. Milf is a category people are into. Yeah, speaking of, you and I did <laughs> uh, do a recap of Milf Manor uh, when yeah. it was on. And I did let you know this week that I'd had it with April Dreams, and I couldn't follow her Instagram anymore. Her just dancing around in LA in front of graffiti walls or on a stage with her skirt up to her hoo ha was just too much for me. I, I, one a week would have been fine, but it's every day. I had I to will, unsubscribe. I will always celebrate her. Um, yeah. But I do understand what you're saying. I'd had it. I'm fascinated. Like, I, I don't know. It's, it's such interesting body work as well. Her physicality is so uh, unique. Yeah, it is. And she's she looks amazing. She's 60 something years old. And then her son, of course, um, Gabriel, mm-hmm. uh, he's somebody you might want to follow because he looks he great. Lot, he has a lot of I noticed I, I checked him out one time and I noticed that most of our mutual friends were gay guys. So he's mm, he's got some gay gay fans as too as well. Well, good for him. He's inclusive and a lot of his get ready with me videos are something. Uh, okay. He stand, I'll he check those the, out. holds the holds the phone up and then you know, one by one, his clothes come on. As, mm-hmm. And it's a lot of, it's a lot of uh, heavy belt buckles and yeah, yeah. Uh, combat boots and yep. uh, mesh tops. He's a chip off the old MILF. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's the funniest thing you've ever said. Yep. <laughs> that was good. Thanks. <laughs> you guys, I want to tell you something. Speaking of funny, if John Hill ever comes to your town with his show, or if you're in New York or LA, wherever he's performing, you have to go. It's John is so talented. Thank you for so coming funny. to my Vegas show. I am so touched and I'm really grateful Amazing. to you. Thank you for coming. I heard later, later Jerry O'Connell was there. I was like, how did I not see him? He was there. Yeah. I think he scooted out real quick. Like the minute. Yeah. He didn't want to get recognized. Yeah. It was over. Well, he had to go to the Bravos, as did I. That's uh, why I scooted out real quick. Right. Right, right, right. That's right. I forgot that was And I barely night. made it. But I am, I'm going to be in New York on the 14th of December and the 22nd in LA of December. Okay. And then Chicago. January 18th. Really? And Chicago people, no, no, no. go see Chica- it. Sorry, Chicago, January 20th. New York, January 18th. All these things I bet could yeah, be yeah, on yeah. Instagram. Exactly. Although yeah. I only have 12 posts on my grid. They're, my grid has disappeared and reappears. There's an issue in Instagram. But you'll what? find it. Go to my links in my bio. What happened yeah. to your Instagram? Because I know you had a, a, a well-known public feed with Twitter back in the day when they took away your Oh, well, yeah. that's because I got hacked. This is, yeah. um, I'm actually on very good standing with um, threads and meta and Instagram and everything. It's nothing. You're an influencer. They How like me. They, they love me. Yeah. It's, it's literally like some issue with their technology where some some people across the country's grid is kind of invisible. This is so boring. Anyway, go to my Instagram anyway that's interesting buy to a me. ticket to see mm-hmm. my show. So we've got New York, we've got LA, we've got Chicago. Yes. Are you going to come here where I am to the DC area? Actually, I I was just thinking about that today. I have a few friends there. I need to know where I should play there. Let's okay, talk, I'll look into it. Let's talk venues. I'll, I'll, we'll we'll talk venues, and I'll get uh, producer Ingrid 
Okay. Well, I think your biggest fan in the world. I love Ingrid. Ingrid and her sister Leah were so into your show that I thought they were going to start throwing panties on the stage. Like they okay. were. Okay. They Listen, were into it. All all panties welcome. Um, well, let's make it happen in DC. Why do I think you were somewhere else? Oh well. Well, I'm in Virginia, but it's you know I just say DC because like it's easier to explain. Like if you say LA, but you really live like in Hidden Hills or something. You I know, do get like, a lot of people asking for DC, and I get a lot of people asking for uh, um, Seattle too. Oh, okay. So Seattle, DC. Those are in the spring, probably. Okay, I love it. I love it. You guys, if you have a chance to go see one of John's shows in one of these cities, you should. Now, tell everybody also where we can hear you on the radio. Well, Andy and I, Andy Cohen and I are Monday through Thursday on Andy Cohen Live, Sirius XM, Channel 102, 7 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Eastern. My show, The News with John Hill, which you still have to come on, Mary Payne. Um, love when we're it. both on the East Coast. You'll figure it out. We'll get our schedules together. That's Tuesdays at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern. How much do you love it when you go to New York and you're like, I don't have to get up at five in the morning? To I do this still show. get up. My body is used to it. So I still get up kind of that early. I'm just and the used Smith to it. The Smith sisters are on even before that. They're on at six, but they don't go to the studio. They do it from home, but still they have to get up at five. Like they're, yes, they're an hour ahead of me. So everything I'm doing, they're already done. It's a lot. I, you know, I've told you this before and I know that you're friends. I love the Smith sisters on Radio Andy. Love. They're brilliant. They're truly They're great. the lights of my life. And I really could not tell you who is who because their voices all sound the same to me. Yeah. If you know them, it gets it gets easier and their personalities, you know, I just know them so well and for so long that it's easy to hear their different yeah. POV. But keep listening and they'll 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 pop out. Yeah, everybody listen to uh, the news with John Hill. I don't miss it. And I also never miss a radio Andy unless it's a guest on that I really just can't stand and then I change it. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to not have as many of those on, but I always like hearing from you who you're not going to listen to. Well, I, I won't say because I mean, I would tell you privately, but I wouldn't tell you here because that's not nice because yeah, I wouldn't yeah, yeah. say that about me publicly. Um, everybody, I want to thank you for um, listening to this or watching this if you're watching it on YouTube and um, sticking by my costume and my necklace that didn't fall off my head. I thought it, would, it is held together with a wing and a prayer back here, guys, a wing and a prayer. And I uh, was very excited. I put on my makeup and then I thought, well, later on, I've got to take like a um, a mug shot because mm. uh, Keisha, my co-host and I are doing mug shot Monday. So I have to take a mug shot of myself. So I've got a, like a little tattoo I'm going to put on my face. Perfect. And I'm going to s- smear my makeup down my face and have like yes. a cry face. Good. Maybe I'll redden my, no- redden my nose. Yes. Well, that was a good tip. A little nod to the cult. I was literally going to do it right after this because I was like, I have full face of makeup on, so I should do it. And then I remember to have to go to Ingrid's house tonight for a party. So thank God I didn't. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, listen, live out loud. Go in, go with your makeup smeared to the party. And a face tattoo. Who yeah. would notice? Yeah. Who would notice? All right, John. Thank you very much. And everybody follow thank John you. Hill on Instagram at John Arthur Hill. And please follow me on Instagram at Pink Shade Pod. Bye. 